Hello Leo viewers, so today I'm going to be looking into what your person is thinking, feeling, and more importantly what actions they're going to be taking towards you most likely within the next week or so. Alright, let's get into it. So this could be an ex, this could be um, a current partner, this could be someone new coming into your life, it's, it's whoever you want it to be really, um, whoever, or whoever comes through I should say. For the Leos, I put the intention in of channeling the Leos that are watching this video. So for the Leos that are watching this video, what do they need to know about their love lives? Got the Knight of Wands, the Hanged Man. So you're kind of just letting something go right now. You're kind of just... In this moment of pause and reflection, um, there's someone that you want to talk to, I feel, but it's just kind of at a stalemate at this moment. Um, you are, are also with the Four of Swords and the Five of Swords energy. With the Knight of Wands here, I feel like, I mean, I feel like you have a lot of passion. I feel like you can be very feisty, um, sometimes very quick to say things that you don't mean. I, I do feel like with the hanged man here, I feel like maybe recently you had an argument with somebody. And I feel like, I feel like this is mixed energy. I feel like there's just a very, I, I get the energy of a very passionate relationship, but a very unstable relationship. So with this, with this energy, it's, it's like the knight of wands, it's impulsive. It's, um, it's just this, this typical, I mean, you're, you're, this other person might be a fire sign too. It's this, it's this very typical impulsive, um, you know, feisty, bold energy. It's, it's taking action. It's, you know, sometimes you, you know, the Leos, you guys sometimes, um, sometimes your egos take over a little bit. So I, I feel like it's, it's kind of pointing, I feel like the Knight of Wands is pointing to that in this reading. I feel like with this Knight of Wands energy that either you said something or your person said something or both of you guys said something to each other and you didn't really think before saying it. You didn't really think before acting. Um, you know, that, that feisty spirit of yours just kind of took over. And and now you're you're letting go of all of it. You're just, you're in this time of pause and reflection. You're... You're trying to see things from a new perspective. You're just kind of hanging back and seeing what happens next. I think this could be for some of you. Maybe you sent a, a text or something that was kind of um, a little forward, and now you're waiting for a response. You're waiting to see what happens with that. Okay, so the energy I'm getting here is an unstable, possibly even an abusive relationship. Um... And again, it's it's if this might not be your story. If it's not, you know, you can still subscribe, and you and you know, the next Leo video might be for you. But um, I tend to channel, you know, specific groups. I guess whoever's whoever is drawn to these videos. So um, let me see. Cause, okay, so with the Page of Wands, this is just the energy I get that I just it might not be a stable relationship. This could also just be an ex that maybe was kind of abusive and unstable, and. Um, because I feel like I feel a lot of past and current energy with this reading. So I feel like this might be an ex that's going to try to come back around. Um, I feel like it was kind of in and out. There was a lot of passion there and a lot of intensity, but a lot of miscommunication and arguments and toxicity as well. And um, so I feel like this is either warning you about a past person that might be watching you and might be coming back around. Or this could potentially be a current um, current situation you're in where it's just kind of in and out energy. And while I was doing this reading, I actually just got um, a phone call from someone, and it was kind of a little it was a little intense. It was nothing bad, but it was a little bit intense. And it's really interesting because right when I right after I finished talking about the hangman, we have the page of wands, which is you know this is a message. The pages it's it's a message. Um, and again, we have the wands and the swords, so it's kind of like this relationship is, it's passionate and it's its fiery and there's a lot of, um, it's like it's lacking the right kind of emotions, you know what I mean? Like wands is all about passion and fiery kind of energy, this, uh, you know, 
um, Leo energy and swords would be, you know, to me with this reading, I want to say communication and argument. So it's really interesting. The page of wands, you have this, this new start and this new potential here and this, you know, enthusiasm and you have this good news coming in. And I want to, I feel like this means two different things. So for one thing, I feel like you have a new start in another area with, of your life. This could be with a, with a second person that's been watching you that might be a more healthy relationship for you. Um, but then it's like you go back to this toxic energy instead. I also feel like the second meaning of this card, so I think it's going to, it depends on what resonates with you. Um, I feel like there's a couple different stories with this reading specifically, actually. So for some of you, it's just you have this new start, but it's like you you kind of start taking it and then you just go back to what's familiar. And you you might have these toxic patterns of um, getting stuck in abusive relationships. And the second meaning I feel is that you're going to kind of, you're starting to like kind of let go of this person. You're kind of starting to let go of the arguments and the back and forth energy and the um, just this toxic energy, you're starting to let go and just try to meditate and relax and ground and find yourself. And then this person pops right back in and throws you all off. Like that call I just got just threw me off and I had to get back to what I was channeling and it took me a minute. Um, and that's, that's really how I take this reading. You know, it's like you have this person might message you and say, hey, I forgive you for this or hey, I want to talk to you again or you know, I've been missing you. They might, you might get a text just saying, you know, I've been, I've been missing you. I want to work things out. But, um, it's, it's like, it just, it throws you off. It really, it just throws you off. It's like you and, or this person are very, you're very spontaneous, but it's not always, I mean, I'm a fire sign myself. So usually I feel like spontaneous is good. But in this specific reading, I'm getting that the spontaneity is not that great, actually. It's more like a toxic sort of spontaneous, like, a, like oh, shit, this person is moving on with their life. I better step in and try to stop them from moving on. Or, you know, they told me they needed space, but screw it. I'm going to get drunk and text them anyway. It's, it's that kind of spontaneous where it's just disregard for others, disregard for... Um, it's almost like they have this selfish connection to you. Like they, they have this disregard for what you want um, or for your need for space. They're just kind of going with what they're focused on what they want. They're focused on them, them, them. This is a very selfish person I'm picking up. And and so, yeah, I feel like they, you know, I feel like you are at a, at a time where you're just kind of trying to relax and find yourself and just ground and, and not attract these kind of toxic relationships anymore. And then, bam, you have someone coming back in with a message that just kind of throws you off and confuses you. And, you know, it's really important to just set boundaries and not allow this to um, not allow this person like really be honest with yourself. Don't get caught up with the loneliness. Don't get um, don't get too lost in your emotions. Don't let them play. I feel like this person plays on your emotions, too. They play on your empathy a lot, I feel. So don't let them bring up the past. Don't let them bring up. Don't let the, don't don't become nostalgic for the past. Be honest with yourself. Stay grounded. Stay in this hangman energy where you're just letting go of all the things that are not serving you any longer. Stay in this energy of the hangman where you're just letting go and releasing and, and doing cut and clear work on um, people that are holding you back, on toxic people, on abusive people, on people that you just cannot communicate with well at all, um, you know, do some cut and clear work, do some, and, and some soul contracts too. I feel like you, some of you might have some toxic soul contracts and you might have these subconscious patterns that keep, um, attracting you to abusive relationships. You're just in that energy and you, you want to cut and clear it. Um, so, you know, when this person, when this ex or whoever this is, maybe it's a current partner or it's an ex, um, I feel past and current energy. Whoever this person is, when they come back in with a with a drunk text or a, um, you know, a random like, oh, come back to my life, I need you, blah blah blah. Just just again, don't let yourself get caught up with the loneliness. Don't let them. I feel like I almost feel like this person maybe. 
I think for a lot of you, this was someone that was in your social social circle. So I feel like there are so many memories that are attached to this person. It's kind of like they just remind you of simpler times. I feel like this is someone that just there, there's just a lot connected to them. I feel like you guys might have possibly some mutual acquaintances um, and they know that and they use that against you. And so it's kind of hard. It's been hard for you to fully cut them out. But, um, but again, it's just the same old, same old, and you have to remind yourself of that, and you have to remind yourself that an abusive person is an abusive person. They're going to continue to be an abusive person, you know what I mean? They're, that's not going to change. Um, it's, it's really just, it's not going to change, and, and they're, they're going, don't get caught up in the nostalgia. Don't get caught up on thinking what could have been, or of all the things that happened, or, or whatever. It's just this very codependent, toxic kind of situation that I'm picking up. Um, and so it's really important for you to stay grounded and stay prepared when this person comes comes back in. And it is just conflict, conflict, and more conflict. With, with the five of wands here, it's like you have two people that want to talk to each other, but it's like they're not seeing each other. Like he's this person's not seeing your pain. He's not seeing what he's done to you. Um he or she is not seeing what they've done to you. They're not, it's it's like they want to talk, but they just can't. Um, it's just, it's more tension. It's more awkwardness. It's more confrontation. It's um, more miscommunication and just not being on the same page with each other and just going in circles again and again and again. And it's really interesting. It's like with the hangman, it's, it's interesting because you've got the hangman, you've got the five of wands, and then you have the four of swords and the five of swords, which is very... It's very back and forth energy. It's like the hangman, you, you're letting go, and then this, this person comes back in with a message, and then bam, you're right back in this energy again with the five of wands where it's just more conflict, more miscommunication, more of the same drama. And then with the four of swords, you're back in. It's very similar to the hangman energy. At least in this reading, it feels very similar to the hang, hangman energy to me because this is this is silence and meditation and, and rest, and this is just trying to heal and trying to, like, this person has taken all they can take from you. Like, you don't have any more left to give. Like, if you're an empath, this person has just, this person is very manipulative, I feel. Like, they have just drained your energy. They've taken all they can take from you. They know how to push your buttons. They know how to play you. They know how to drain you and manipulate your energy. And you always think maybe this time it's going to be different. Maybe this time they're going to do things differently. Maybe this time, you know, maybe we could at least be friends. Maybe maybe we can at least, we have this history together. We know a lot of the same people. Maybe we could at least get to a point where we can be friends. But but no, it, it again, you're left, um, you know, nostalgic and kind of just heartbroken and messed up over this and just trying to rest and heal and, and isolate yourself and let this go. And this is, it's taking such a toll on you on a soul level. This person is really just in such a psychic vampire energy, I feel. And, you know, you want to have something left to give to the right person. You don't want to keep giving this person your trust and your energy and your love just over and over again. It's just, it's draining you, you know what I mean? It's just not doing any good for you. And then it's really interesting. So the five of cards, five of cards, five of, oh my God, five of cards, five of swords, <laughs> Again, same as the Five of Wands here. This is just more conflict. This is this is hostility. This is betrayal. This is possibly someone that's cheated on you or is considering cheating on you. And it's kind of like you try to go into like you're just drained and you just try to isolate and you just try to have some alone time. And this person just says no. They they don't respect your need for space. They don't, um, they just, they'll do whatever they need to do to get what they want. And this is, this is, you see how aggressive she is. You see this energy. It's like, or this could be, you know, this could be male or female, but it's just, it's someone who's just so aggressive and so hostile and they just, they do not have good intentions for you. It's just, it's a constant struggle with this person. And, you know, your guides are just here to tell you, if this person is abusive, it's, it's going to continue to be that way. You know what I mean? Like, I, in my readings that I do, I, I feel like I, I, I feel like I get so many um, clients who are in abusive relationships. I feel like I, they, they tend to be drawn to me um, 
I guess possibly just because I give honest readings, I'm not just going to say, no, this person is great for you. I'm going to tell you how it is. You know what I mean? If someone's not good, I'm going to tell you that. And, you know, I just want to say that an abusive man or an abusive woman, and this could be physical abuse, it could be verbal abuse, putting you down, um, not respecting your boundaries, trying to renegotiate your boundaries, um, just any kind of toxic energy like that, you know, most of those people, they're going to continue to be that way. If someone doesn't want to change, you just, you can't change them despite what kind of history you have with them. Um, if they want to change, they're going to do it. They're going to take the steps to do it on their own if they genuinely want it. But you have to be honest with yourself and take a step back and realize when it's you wanting the change and they're just kind of going along with it to make you happy. You know what I mean? And and I always tell my clients too, when I, when I do um, channel from people who happen to be in, um, you know, physically abusive relationships, I always say an abusive person, man or woman, is, is going to be abusive. Like there are certain, this goes from, again, it goes for men and women because I know that there are plenty of abusive women out there too. But, um, but, but yeah, I, I always say, you know, an abusive person is, is going to continue to be ab abusive. There are men out there that will just not ever hit a woman. Like they will, they just could not ever fathom hitting a woman. Like it's just not in them to do that. You know what I mean? So it's not like, oh, he just hit me once. It's like once is all it takes. You know what I mean? One little push, one hit, whatever. It's just, it's just, there are certain, it's, 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 it really is with with abuse. I feel like it really is black and white. It's it's like there are men out there who will never ever hit a woman, and then there's there's men out there who will, and the men that will will continue to do it. They might stop for a year or two and pretend like they've gotten better, and then do it again. But they will always do it. Um, that will always be their their go to. You know that doesn't, from what I've seen, in multiple cases, that just that doesn't really change. Um, and, you know, as empaths, you really have to shield yourself and you have to learn how to say no and how to get away from those situations and how to put yourself first, no matter how hard it is. And really just work on yourself and, you know, develop, you know, re, um, really work on those subconscious patterns um, that repeat from childhood so that you can attract better people, um, higher quality people. And, you know, and you'll get to a point in your life where you're just so disgusted and turned off by, by abusive people, whether it's verbal or physical abuse, you will get to a point when you really develop your confidence and you really just put yourself first and set these strong unbreakable boundaries and cut, cut and clear the people that need to be cut and cleared. Um, and you just do that inner work and heal and you get to a point where you will not even be attracted to abusive guys. You will be so disgusted by that energy. You will be repulsed by that energy and you will start wanting much better people, much better quality people. You know what I mean? You just, you have to see that it's perspective and you have to, you have to have this, you have to allow and, and work for this perspective shift. You know what I mean? Um, you have to put the time and work into yourself into, instead of into these other people. And you have to learn the very hard lesson that, you know, most empaths just can't seem to learn is that um, all the love in the world will not stop an abusive person from being an abusive person. You know, like I said, there are men out there who will hit women and then there are men out there who would never in a million years dream of hitting a woman. And you, you want the kind of person where you don't even have to question whether or not they're going to ever go there with you. You feel me? Um, so let's see if I can get some more clarification on that relationship. Let's see what else I can get. What, else, what do you guys want to tell you? Oh, okay. I guess that's what we want to tell you. <laughs> I guess that's what's going on. <laughs> Just kind of choosing the cards for me. They all came out. Justice. You know, if this person hurt you a lot, they are going to... You are going to get some justice, I feel. You you are going to... You are going to get justice with this. And we have the Ace of Swords. The Hangman. The Eight of Swords. The Moon. 
and the Ten of Pentacles. So looking at these cards, I do feel like justice is coming in for you regarding multiple situ situations in your life that just have not been, I feel like life has not been very fair and very balanced to you. And I feel like you're getting to a point where life is going to finally start being fair and balanced to you. But again, um, you have a lot of life changes ahead of you that you need to make. You need to make these decisions. You need to make the choice not to stay stuck in this energy and not to waste any more of your time and energy with this this situation um and then you have the ace of swords which i feel like is kind of talking about the mentality that you might be coming into after starting to let go of this situation where it's like you have this mental clarity and you have this peace and you have this this new fighting spirit but at the same time it's almost like you see how kind of strict she is almost so i feel like it's almost saying like you might go through a fury a period where you're just kind of cynical and bitter and you're kind of angry about all the stuff that you've just gone through but again i think that's pretty normal i think if you're in one of these toxic situations it's really normal to be to go to do the shadow work it's normal to be in that energy where you're you're angry about all the stuff you've been through you're angry about how unfair your life has been and you're angry about these abusive relationships you've been in, you're angry that you just get, gave this your all and you got screwed over. Um, but I do feel like, I feel like it's almost shadow work though in a way, it's, it's necessary, you know what I mean? Like this is, this is going to shift you into this new perspective of the hanged man where you're going to just be letting things go more, you're going to be meditating more, you're going to be developing your intuition and working on yourself and you're going to really develop confidence and just to have a new understanding of yourself and you're going to learn to set these boundaries but again i feel like i feel a lot of i'm not gonna lie i feel a lot of emotional work ahead of you um but it's just it's more stepping out of your comfort zone and making the changes that you know on a soul level you need to make you know like with abusive relationships it's been a long time since i've been in an abusive relationship it has been a long time but i remember you know, whenever I would get with an abusive guy, I would always feel like, like I got screwed over. I was like, why didn't my guides warn me? But the truth is they did warn me. They, they were there warning me. They, they were, there were red flags. There were little things in his body language, in the energy, in the way my body tensed up around him, the way I didn't feel like I was ever relaxed around him, the way that I, um, just little things, little offhand comments he would make. Like all the signs were there, all the red flags were there. And I ignored them. You know what I mean? So it's it's like the red flags are usually there with these abusive people, but I feel like when you're really in love, sometimes you're just in denial and you you're not you're not noticing the red flags. So you really want to listen to your guides and develop your intuition and meditate more. And um and you, know, and, you know, listen to the red flags and listen to the green flags, too. Like, listen to your body's into develop your body's intuition and listen to your body's intuition. When you're around someone, really be mindful of how you feel around them. Be mindful of, of how you're, like, pay attention to your chakras, especially your heart and your throat chakra. Like, do they feel open or do they feel closed around this person um, or these people? I feel like for you, it might be multiple people, actually. I feel like it's it's I feel like this pattern has been going on for quite a while with you honestly with most of you um and just really really be honest with yourself about both the red flags when you meet someone new and you're dating and also the green flags like the synchronicity and the signs that this person is right for you like be be honest with both with both types of flags um and and just just Again, tune into your body. Just see how this person's energy feels to you. Don't don't try to look for the best in them because sometimes with empaths, you guys end up kind of seeing things that aren't there. You're, you're projecting and kind of seeing what you want them to be or what they could be or what they were 10 years ago before they were damaged. And the reality is that they, that they might not ever go back to being that person. They probably won't ever go back to being that person. And if they do... It would be their decision. It would be something that they would want, and it would probably take years for them to do that work to get to that point. Um, so you have to keep that in mind. If you know how hard it is to change yourself, now imagine how much harder it is to change someone else. Like it just it doesn't 
it doesn't work unless the person actually wants to change. And, and this, this energy that I get from this reading, this is a very manipulative person. This is a very toxic person, and they're almost toxic on... I'd say almost on a soul level. Like, there might be still some good in there. I'm sure that there is deep down, but it's, it's, there's, if you're being honest with yourself, there's way more bad in this situation than there is good. Like, if you stop listening to the loneliness and you really, and I know it's hard. I know it's so incredibly hard when you're alone. Like, it really is. Um, it's incredibly painful. But, you know, it's, it's almost better to just be alone for a while than to be with the wrong person and to let that, to let that resonate in your mind and make you think that that's just how love is and that's just how people are. You have to remember you're, you're programming your subconscious mind every day. And for this group of Leos that I'm reading, I feel like you guys really need to work on, again, cutting and clearing all these people and also making these necessary life changes. You know, you, you will be in limbo for a little bit. You will be making these life changes, but it's really good energy. You're going to have a new perspective come out of this. You're going to have a new life coming out of this if you want that if you choose to go that path it's um i'm, I'm being reminded of a uh, tracy chapman song actually i'm trying to remember the name of the song but the lyric goes we've got to make a decision leave tonight or live and die this way and and it's kind of it's true you've got to make a decision you you leave or you you waste your life away in this situation. I'm sorry, this is such a harsh reading. I wish I, I wish I got better energy for you guys. Um, but again, I, I do feel like if you're willing to step out of your comfort zone and, and cut these people out and make the choices that are right for you, not for anybody else, just making the choices that are right for you above all else, then I do see you getting out of this toxic energy and rediscovering yourself and, and remaking yourself and creating the life that you want on all levels. And I do see you having justice finally. So you might have some karma coming in. This could be like a court case with this person. This could be... Um, just if they cheated on you, seeing them get cheated on, that kind of energy where you just, you have justice coming in. And with the Eight of Swords here, I feel like, with, so with the Eight of Swords, it's, it's someone who's kind of asleep and not wanting to, in this, in this deck, it's someone who's asleep and kind of just not wanting to deal with anything right now. And there's, I've noticed in these cards that I've gotten for you guys, there's a really huge emphasis on time. So I do feel like this might be someone you've known a while. And with the Eight of Swords in the traditional tarot deck, it's, it's someone who has swords all around them and then they have a clear path right in front of them. But they're so focused on the swords around them that they don't see that there is an opening right in front of their faces. And so I feel like this is this really resonates with the reading. It's like you have this way out. You have this whole new life and this whole new path ahead of you. You just have to let go of these. You have to stop looking at all the swords and all the toxic energy and the toxic people around you. And you have to, you have to be willing to let that go. You have to be willing to step out of your comfort zone and, and see the path and see the ways out. You know, you have to look for the way out and see the way out and take that chance as soon as you get it. And with the moon, I feel like this is you developing your intuition. This is, you're, you're going to have some fear and some trust issues to work through after all this energy that you're getting through. Um, but it's like this new, it's almost like this new seductive kind of energy. It's like this new, um, just, just developing your intuition, just listening to yourself and your dreams more. And then with the Ten of Pentacles here, I feel like you're successful in business and career and other aspects of your life. You know, you're you're manifesting abundance in your life in other ways. And you, um, you know, you're becoming more stable. Is That's the feeling I get from it is just, yeah, you're becoming more stable and... It's, it's, it's overall, I mean, again, a lot of really heavy life cho life choices to make, but it's it's good in the long run. Um, I do feel like after you get through this energy, you will have someone new coming in. I think it might be a little while, but but it's good. It's um, It'll just take some time, but it's, it's a good thing. Um, again, there's a strong emphasis on reprogramming your subconscious mind. So I do feel like a lot of you have soul contracts and you have... Um, 
you know, there's astrally, you have red threads that connect you to, to the people, like your soulmates and the people that you're close to. And for this, that specific person that I, the specific people that I channeled in this video, I do feel like you have red threads with that person that need to be cut. And also with other toxic, maybe toxic past friends that also need to be cut. So look into doing cut and clear work, look into doing um, uncrossing work, healing work, um, a lot of uncrossing, road opening, banishing, that kind of, if you do spell work, that kind of spell work is what I feel you guys need to be doing right now, is just a lot of releasing of the old energy, you know, getting out of this energy, you need, it's, it's like you need this very deep purging process on all levels right now is what I'm feeling, and you need to reprogram your subconscious mind, otherwise you're going to get out of this relationship and you're going to go right back into another one that's just like it, um, and so you really need to be mindful of that. You need to to really be aware of these these childhood patterns that are repeating. But binarial beats are one thing that helps with that. You know, I think being introspective too, and and you know, taking a step back and really just figuring this all out is it's so important right now and you really you just want it you want to be become more intuitive and more aware of these subconscious patterns that keep repeating and the subconscious underlying beliefs that are repeating you know what i mean it's like these these deep-rooted insecurities that keep manifesting in your relationships like you want to be mindful of that and you want to work on you want to be mindful of your negative self-talk, for one thing. You want to be mindful of the things you tell yourself and the beliefs that you hold. And, you know, work on doing whatever it is that builds your confidence, whether it's having hobbies, whether it's going to school, whether it's pursuing music or art or pursuing. And just think about what you, what did you dream about pursuing before? You know what I mean? Like, what did you give up for this relationship? What did you give up for, for, because you got depressed or you got weighed down by life or whatever it was, you know what I mean? Like just pursue your hobbies and your passions and, and whatever career feels right to you on a soul level and, and work on, again, doing a lot of healing work, uncrossing, cut and clear, ending old soul contracts, um, you know, just banishing this old toxic stagnant energy and, you know, road opening work as at two and just, and just really, really healing and re really rebuilding yourself and just doing just putting the work in to um you know to change these subconscious beliefs to really reprogram your subconscious um i do feel like you guys once you get this person is blocking your third eye i feel like they're so toxic and controlling that it's like you can't see past them but once you get rid of this person i feel like a lot of your psychic power is going to come flooding in and you're you're going to to get this opportunity to really develop your intuition more and listen to your guides more and so it's really important when that energy comes in to to flow with it and really you know really develop your intuition that saves you a lot intuition is going to protect you a lot more than just plain logic all right what else do leo's leo viewers need to know The warrior, okay. Invisible, hmm. Love. So it's like you have like a very masculine or very, very dominant person here. Usually I take the warrior to be good, but in this reading, I don't feel like it is. I feel like this is like a very dominant, controlling person, and you kind of feel invisible to them. Like your needs are not being met, you're not being heard, you're not being understood, but you love them. And so it's like you just feel kind of stuck and you end up staying. And you end up being, we have the obedience card here, so it's like you just end up being obedient to this situation and you're blinding yourself and you're in denial. And then it's like you take this risk and you try to summon, well, yeah, okay, there we go, risk, summon, and strength. So you need to take a risk and step out of your comfort zone, like I've been saying in this reading, and you need to summon the strength to 
summon whatever strength you have left to get out of this situation so they do not train you any more than they already have you know like i said this is already going to be a healing process you've already got a lot of inner work ahead of you to do to get to a point where you're attracting healthier relationships um so don't waste any more time with this person and again you don't have to it's not healthy doesn't mean boring healthy doesn't mean just completely stable and normal it doesn't it doesn't have to mean that it just to me when I say healthy I just mean a relationship where you're not being physically or verbally abused you know what I mean like all relationships have their problems but you just you at least want someone who's not abusive you know what I mean um all right what's what are the final messages what are the final messages for the Leo viewers that are watching this Surrender outdated beliefs about yourself, so let go of limiting ideas about yourself that originate from the past. Then you can own your power and soar in your life. So it's pretty much what I just said. You know, you got it. You have these subconscious patterns and soul contracts you really need to be aware of, and you really need to cut those out. Um, and, you know, again, just work, just do the things that feel good to you, do the things that feel right for you, right to you, like reclaim yourself, Re you're going to find yourself once you let go of this, this um, toxic energy, you know, get, getting out of this energy and, and doing what you need to do to pre preserve and protect yourself from this. Surrender your belief in scarcity. The universe is asking you to open to the infinite nature of abundance. In this way, you can remove blocks in your life and succeed beyond your wildest dreams. So I feel like this might be pointing to a specific belief that you have, um, that, you know, good men are just, there's no good men out there, or this is just how men are, and you just, or, or women, it could be for some of you, for the male viewers, um, it could be, you know, it, male or women, it doesn't matter, um, or transgender, or it's, it's whatever, or, or if you identify as male or female, it's whatever you, whatever energy you're in, you understand, like, don't get caught up on semantics, um, but yeah, well, surrender your belief in scarcity. So you might just think this is just how people are. People are just toxic. People are just overly negative. People are just abusive. I just kind of have to put up with it if I want love. And you have to get out of that. You're being manipulated. So you have to really get out of that mentality and let that go and realize where that belief originate from, originates from and, you know, try to... Um, try to try to not only banish it but you need a better you need another belief to replace it you need to you need something else to to um to come in it's like when you take out something old you have to there's there's like an emptiness there almost that you still have to fill you still have to put like a new belief into in if that does that make any sense hopefully so instead of you know, good people just don't exist, or I don't deserve a good person, or I'll never find a good person, you know, try to replace that belief with, you know, good people might be rare, but I'm a good person myself, and I deserve to have other good people in my life. I deserve to have energy in my life that resonates with me. So, so surrender outdated beliefs, surrender to divine timing. Um, you know, again, like I said, this, this, your, your, your true person, your, your true love, they can't really come in right now because you wouldn't be attracted to them right now. You are so used to a certain type of person that if your real, you know, soulmate or twin flame came in, you would probably friend zone them. You probably wouldn't resonate with them because that's not the energy you're currently resonating with. And and so, you know, you have to there's just there's some work to do before your person comes in. Um Surrender the idea that you can fix someone. It's time for a relationship to shift. It doesn't work to try to fix someone. Each person must be accountable for his or her own healing. So like I said earlier in the beginning, you can't fix someone who doesn't want to be fixed. You can't fix someone who doesn't see an error in their ways. You can't fix somebody who only apologizes um, to be manipulative when they think they're going to lose you. You know what I mean? And the energy I get from this person is like, so, is these are people that... They'll apologize to keep you. They'll say what they need to do to get their way and to keep you happy, but there's no genuine 
desire for them to change. Like they don't have that same desire for them for themselves to change as, as you have for them to change. Surrender to miracles. I feel like you have dolphin spirit animals around you. Um, but you might be connected to the ocean. I also see I'm drawn to the moon there and also to the to dolphins. Dolphins are very playful. They're very creative. They're very sweet and intuitive and empathetic and just loving. They're very, dolphins are such pure animals. And I feel like you have dolphin spirit animals around you that are saying, you know, you're not alone through this healing process. It, it might be, I know that these life changes that need to be made ahead of you are, are scary. I know it's not easy um, to get yourself out of the situation, but you know, you're not alone. You do have your spirit guides. You do have the spirit animal of the dolphin around you that you can connect with and you're you're getting as you get away from this person it's like you're going to reclaim your energy and your strength and your power and this, this vitality that you lost because of them um you know it's still in you but it's just been numbed down because of all everything they've been putting you through um and and so it's like when you when you finally do the healing and you get rid of this this energy it's like you're you're surrendering to miracles you're you're in this very um playful creative energy where you're just you're finding yourself all over again and you know surrender worry it says here make a commitment not to lead an anxiety driven life when worries arise breathe them out of your body focus on the power of your heart and have faith that spirit is guiding you always so your guides are letting you know you know you're not you're not alone through this process as scary as it might be um, you, you are being divinely guided. So just, just make the necessary steps. And again, it's, it's, it might be a roller coaster of emotions at first, you know, it's, it is when you leave an abusive relationship, there's, there's anger, there's pain, there is happiness. There's this feeling of freedom. There's all kinds of mixed emotions, but it's, it's like a purging process. It ends up being so, so worth it in the end when you realize that you just have this freedom to be yourself and to do the things that you want to do in life. Um, so keep that in mind. Thank you guys for watching. If it resonates, please like, share, subscribe. Thank you guys.